the word that everybody is using to describe tonight is bittersweet. It's just bitter. Uh, the fact of the matter, I'm not saying Joe Biden is bitter, but, you know, it's like you've been thrown out a window and as you're falling, you go, gee, it's nice out here. No, he got thrown out of, of a window. Biden is known in his career as being one of the best eulogy givers at funerals. And now they're making him come and give his own career. He, he has eulogy. files of every eulogy. Yeah. He's, he's and and now they're making him give his own eulogy at this uh, convention. Those uh, there are a lot of people, if they have made it this far uh, into what is to be honest, on the East Coast, the second day of the Democratic National Convention, is I'm not the first one to observe. Um, <laughs> it, the, it, is, the, it is late, which is, it is, rather which is late. very notable, I think, in, for a lot of reasons. Yeah, I mean, it is fair to say that the Republicans had a tighter ship. The old lion's last roar. That was old, a long roar. Yeah, but it was a beautiful. <laughs> but listen, I, I, I wish it had been shorter. I wish it had been earlier. So Joe Biden just wrapped up his DNC convention speech. And to summarize, it was classic Joe Biden. He, I noticed, tried to recreate his 2016 DNC speech, which is widely regarded to be one of Biden's best speeches ever. Except the difference is this is 2024 Biden. So it sounded a lot more like this. The United States Supreme Court majority wrote the following, quote, women are not without electrical, without, not allowed, not without electoral, electoral or political power. But nonetheless, honestly, Joe Biden is not the candidate anymore. I don't think it really matters at this point. What I found to be most interesting was just how fake the entire night was. They did this whole display of grandeur for Joe Biden. And as you can see here, they're holding these signs that say, we love Joe, right? We heart Joe all over the building. So check it out. Thank you. And it's like, OK, you guys just cooed him out of power. Like, we know you guys are resentful for Biden for not stepping out sooner. Biden is certainly resentful that you took him out of office. But the whole thing is completely fake. Oh, we love Joe so much. But I thought the funniest part about this entire struggle session that the Democrats had tonight was none other than Nancy Pelosi, as you can see here, holding one of those signs that literally says, we heart Joe. Now, if you know the history here, you would know that is not true. Nancy Pelosi was one of the chief architects of the coup against Joe Biden. But as we all know, these are some of the fakest people to ever exist. The Democrats, if nothing else, if nothing else can be said about them, are certainly a party of just disingenuous, sleazy, fake people. And check out the facial expression on Nancy Pelosi's face while she is holding the We Heart Joe sign. Yeah, you go, Joe. Look at her. Ch take a look. Yeah. <laughs> you just look at her face. Look at her face. It's so un unenthusiastic. It's almost like she looks guilty. Like she feels bad, maybe. Or she just is not going along because we know she does not love Joe Biden. And by the way, there is no love mutually from Joe Biden to her either. And it gets even crazier because earlier on in the night on CNN, Nancy Pelosi essentially publicly admitted to cooing out Joe Biden, right? Oh, no, that's not true. That's not really happening. OK, take a look. Nancy Pelosi admits that the whole thing happened. You know what? Have you talked I to him? Is my only what I have to do. Right. He made the decision for the country. My concern was not about the president, it was about his campaign. <laughs> I did what I had to do. Notice she kind of says that under her breath and then is like, no, 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 wait. No, he made the decision for the country. Of course, that's what they were saying at the DNC all of tonight. Thank you, Joe Biden, so much for stepping aside. You really are a real patriot. He did not want to step aside. And the family especially did not want to step aside. But they're all here acting like they love Joe Biden so much. Thank you very much. It's like this is the Democrat Party in a nutshell. This guy dedicates like almost his entire life life to serving the party only for them to coo him
him out of office and then at the end of it all, pretend like they love the guy. It's like, OK, if Biden really was proud of his decision, he would be attending the rest of the DNC. I don't know. Maybe he would watch Kamala Harris's speech. But of course, we know he is not, as we reported in the last video. And on the flip side, if Obama was so proud of Biden, he would be there. But he wasn't at the speech tonight. And you saw the body language on Nancy Pelosi's face. The entire thing is kind of just entertaining to watch. It's like a little high school drama or something like that. But on the flip side, let's also talk about Kamala Harris, because clearly something's going on there as well. She's on some type of power trip, because if you watch the speech the entire night, I did not notice one part where Kamala Harris stands up or even claps for the things that Joe Biden is saying. So she's sending her own kind of message like I'm in charge now. I'm not exactly sure, but check it out. Violent crime has dropped to the lowest level of more than 50 years. And crime will keep coming down when we put a prosecutor in the Oval Office instead of a convicted felon. Look at her. You see, uh, her, her husband, I believe, right, is next to her clapping and stuff. Everyone's clapping. She's just standing there, kind of a blank stare on her face, totally on the power trip. Oh, and by the way, one thing that I forgot to mention, the planners of the convention essentially stalled Joe Biden's speech and made him go as late as possible. So that way, I think, A, nobody would really hear his speech. They didn't want to hear him talk. They didn't want to give him the spotlight. But also on top of that, maybe in the hopes that keeping Biden up after midnight would make him screw up the speech as much as possible because it was reported and even noted by CNN and others. We were 90 minutes behind schedule at this convention. This guy says it is unconscionable to have President Biden's address occur at midnight Eastern time, which it started at, I believe, around 1130 p.m. We should postpone some upcoming folks and put the president up there soon. And it's like, does anyone believe that was just an accident? Oh, some of the speakers went too long, whatever. No, most of these conventions, at least you watch the RNC, see are timed pretty well the speeches are kind of pre-screened and all of that the only thing i can think of is that it was entirely intentional right they literally planned the event so that joe biden could be pushed off to the side as much as possible it was already bad enough that he was speaking on the first night that nobody watches and then you do this those uh there are a lot of people if they have made it this far uh into what is to be honest on the east coast the second day of the Democratic National Convention is I'm not the first one to observe. Um, it, the, it, is, the, it is late, which is, it is, rather which is late. very notable, I think, in, for a lot of reasons. Yeah, I mean, it is fair to say that the Republicans had a tighter ship it was honestly sad to watch, especially when you know internally what's been going on in the Democrat Party here. Just a totally pathetic fake struggle session. And this, by the way, is something that even Chris Wallace and other guests on CNN noted throughout the night. Take a listen. The word that everybody is using to describe tonight is bittersweet. It's just bitter. Uh, the fact of the matter, I'm not saying Joe Biden is bitter, but, you know, it's like you've been thrown out a window and as you're falling, you go, gee, it's nice out here. No, he got thrown out of a window and, and basically he was forced. Uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of talk tonight about uh, how generous it was of him uh, to and, and, and selfless of him. He was basically forced out by Nancy Pelosi and Barack Obama and Chuck Schumer and Hakeem Jeffries. This, this is his moment tonight. This is his moment. Yeah. yeah, Biden is known in his career as being one of the best eulogy givers at funerals. And now they're making him come and give his own career. He, he has eulogy. files of every eulogy. Yeah, he's, he's and, ever and now they're making him give his own eulogy at this uh, convention. I mean, you have it, to give uh, one. It's best that you get to give your own. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I, I, I am anxious to see how they handle it. It's a sticky wicket. I mean, he was bullied out of this race after 52 years of service to the Democratic Party. And it wasn't all about his age. He was unpopular. He was going to lose. It was Afghanistan. It was inflation. It was immigration. And now, uh, and he had to be dragged out by the fingernails. I'm sorry. This is yeah. not, so he's not here in a happy yeah. moment, okay? We'll, I know we'll we'll that this, this yarn that's being spun in this hall that he was popular and selfless and handing on. No, no, no. It is the opposite. And everybody knows it. And yet the Democrats are engaging in this this theater of looking into cameras 
and saying it. That, folks, is exactly right. It's not just Kamala Harris, who is the fake person on the Democrat ticket. It's their entire party, the whole theater tonight. When you understand what was really going on, completely pathetic to watch. We love Joe. We love Joe. Oh, yeah. If you love him so much, why is he not the candidate? Oh, he chose to do so willingly himself. Everyone knows that's not true. Even Nancy Pelosi sort of like had a little Freudian slip there and admitted that's not true. OK, everyone knows this. But of course, their agenda, as usual, is to just hope they can kind of put the wool over the face of the American people or something. But there you have it, folks. That was essentially night. But there you have it, folks. That was essentially night one of the DNC. Key takeaways here. Number one, Donald Trump bad. OK, that was like most of the night, obviously. And then number two, uh, we love Joe Biden so much. Yeah, we definitely didn't coo him out of office. He stepped down willingly. It's like, OK, OK, guys, that said, let me know your thoughts. Be sure to leave a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And until next time, God bless and peace.